This screencast is going to pick up with newspapers. So improved communication is going to accelerate and just increase the flow of info, um, not only across the Atlantic, like from England into the colonies, but also just within the colonies themselves. So we're gonna see information spreading more quickly, more efficiently through the colonies, kind of connecting them overall. Um, colonists begin to publish their own newspapers. Um, they, so you see an example of like the Virginia Gazette on the PowerPoint. They, um, the newspapers become a forum for debating local matters. Um, it will help con to connect colonists with one another. They would often include things like prices, trading, advertisements, like in the newspapers. Um, and because, you know, newspapers pull the colonies together, this is actually going to end up creating like further isolation from England because they kind of are focusing on their own local matters and local communities, local interests over that of the um, like overall national interests back at home um, across the Atlantic and Europe. In terms of consumption and the colonies kind of also becoming not only, you know, increasing their markets, they're also turning into kind of a, a consumer culture. Colonists are becoming more reliant on English-made goods that were coming into the colonies and being sold in the colonies like throughout the 18th century. So just for perspective, um, like a statistic here, by 1773, so like by the 1770s, which is like the later part of the century, Americans would buy nearly five times as many manufactured goods that were exported from Britain um, than they had at the beginning of the century in 1700. So like definitely the trend over the 1700s is that they were purchasing more English-made goods. And this is when we see tea become um, a really big part of colonial culture. Drinking tea is something that is um, very British and very colonial at the same time. So depend, no matter if you were a citizen living in England or a British colonist in the Americas, drinking tea was definitely a sign of refinement um, to the British on both sides. So they are buying English made and produced and exported tea. Um, keep that in mind for the seeds of revolution because you know tea kind of comes into the picture later. And the thing I want to end this screencast with is just the story of Georgia um, as it will become the 13th and final British colony. So a group of English entrepreneurs um, led by James Oglethorpe, who you see on the screen, and his name is typed out there as well, founded Georgia. So it's a group of businessmen out of England. And there were multiple purposes and intentions for this colony and settlement. They, they wanted to um, have Georgia serve as a debtors or prison um, colony, so those who owed money and were thrown in prison. Um, other, other convicts would be sent to Georgia for work opportunities. Um, they wanted Georgia to provide sanctuary for Europe's persecuted Protestants, if anyone was leaving to seek, um, you know, the freedom of religion, like fleeing any sort of Catholic country, they wanted Georgia to be a settlement. They wanted to convert the Indians, um, especially the ones that they had good, you know, somewhat friendly relations with. Uh, they also wanted to create a buffer between South Carolina and Spanish Florida. Recall that Spanish Florida is... Um, you know, the southernmost British colony prior to Georgia being occupied by any British citizens. And it was a very wealthy colony. And they're kind of wanting to just create this buffer zone between England and Spain, um, since Spain is south of that region in, in Florida. Now, they made some pretty important decisions, though, in the early stages of Georgia's settlement. They decided to ban slavery. They outlawed slavery altogether in the beginning. They kind of wanted to establish a more equal, classless society. They didn't want to promote institutions that really um, encourage the division of class. Instead, they wanted, you know, obviously they have prisoners there, but they want the, the prisoners to kind of like work their way out of um, trouble eventually and have the opportunity to have like 
good, normal lives, you know, with the promise that they could have a chance at being equal and being successful in society one day. That's kind of the environment they want to cultivate. They also outlawed alcohol and tobacco. Um, Essentially, the founders want this English colony to be the very best version of any English colony. They want to, like, really have it almost be um, utopian-esque, you know. And unfortunately, these regulations will not be permanent ones. Um, I mean, think what you want about them, you know, banning alcohol or tobacco, but in terms of slavery, we would have liked to see that remain outlawed. But essentially increasing pressure from settlers and migrants coming into Georgia just demand the same opportunities that other British colonies have. So they want to be able to participate in the same activities and have the same type of economy, um, being allowed to possess and own slaves. And so that's something to kind of push for and eventually the founders have to give way and um, slavery will be legalized as well as other things we mentioned. All right, if you have any questions about this, write them down um, and we can cover that tomorrow. You'll have a good afternoon.